what better selling point for Auburn? We're so good. People that leave come back. Truthful. Players in the transfer portal. That's how good. Like, think about that from a marketing standpoint. It is the thing that in one instance, everybody will love. But it's also the thing in the other instance that everybody will lament. When it works for you, it's great. When it's not doing exactly what you want it to do, wow. The you, cry babies on social media will just have at it. The transfer portal, AJ. Hmm. The transfer portal has been here for what? Two years now, maybe? I think it's like two, four years. Two full years? You but think- there's been changes as we've gone. And right. obviously this is another kind of iteration of what it is. And so, yeah, there's just, you know, coaches, players are all trying to figure it out. And so that's one problem that this has, whether it was NIL, because both these things kind of came about the same time, the transfer portal, NIL, do something to make a response, right? And to try to say that they're doing something without having these stipulations, these considerations, at least that's how it seems for the transfer portal and stuff. And so I think that's where the frustration comes in. So, but when it works for you, it does. So what I would like for us to discuss is this. I like for us to talk about the good things and the bad things that have happened thus far, not just in football, but for a lot of things uh, in Auburn sports. And I had to write down a list before we start here. So um, let's give you a list of what, as of the recording, on Sunday evening of this podcast that we we know of have transferred out of football. Desmond Tisdale, Cameron Brown, Jeffrey Imba, Tavares Dawson. AJ, I would love for you to give some thoughts on those names and anything you take away from the initial departures of the transfer portal for Auburn football. Yeah, it's just the world I think we live in now. I mean, I, I'm – I've very loyal person when it comes to just about anything. And, you know, if I was a college athlete, I'd probably stay at whatever university I had originally committed to, but that's not the reality of what it is now. And you just see these players like Emba, Dawson, Tisdale, Cam Brown. And you're like, wow, these, these were names, you know, when they came to Auburn pretty highly talked about guys. And for most of them, they've had pretty limited you know, time to play at Auburn. You know, they they have, you know, they've been here, but they haven't made right. as many plays, catches, whatever it is they're doing. And, you know, you look at even somebody like Tavares Dawson, and I was like, he he was one of Jared and my guys, especially in the wide receiver room, to watch because we we were thinking, wow, this is this could be another guy to really make the depth better at wide receiver. And then you look at what he did last year. He only had two catches for 30 yards. And you're like, that puts in perspective, you know, did he have sure, you know, that 40 yard catch, that was the wow moment. That was the biggest pass. That was the biggest play that we had. But like everything else is kind of just showing him like we, we probably need, and and this is kind of the hard part of the transfer portal. Guys have to leave to open up spots for the transfers to right. come in. And at this point, from what I've kind of heard, Auburn has like 90 to 93 ish kind of uh, scholarship positions. And you got to get that down. Mm-hmm. So by the time Auburn comes in the fall, we got to get that back down to a, a number. I think it's 85. Um, and so you have to have players leave in order to have more come in. So this is, you know, we're, we just started this yesterday, the transfer portal opening up and it's through April 30th. And I think these, these guys are just the start of it. Um, And just to set your expectations and it's going to be hard um, seeing a lot of guys like this that are big names probably leave. Yeah. And that's going to be hard because a lot of these players had a lot of high hopes. We had, we had hopes for them. Um, And so to see that, that kind of, you know, move on, maybe to a different school, hopefully to a different school if they are in the transfer portal. Um, But we've also seen guys like Dawson, who he put his name in in October, came back, played the spring. Now he's back in it. And you're thinking it could happen again. You know, some, one of these guys like Emba, you know, I think he's very good. 
I think he'll find he a is. spot. But it would be pretty cool, you know, a few months later we found out Emba takes his name out of the transfer portal. So it Do you may really think that's going to happen, though? It, it I may. I, I feel like that's kind of the outlier, though. Yeah. I don't get the feeling that Emba's coming back. I hope I'm wrong. I, I really do. Um, I, I That one was probably, if you want to talk about being shocked, and I was doing my best whenever I was on here at E2C Network or wherever, talking to people, prepping people, get ready. I mean, you're about to see a lot of people leave, no matter the sport, because this is the transfer portal. I mean, we're right here a day after the spring part of the transfer portal just opened up. People are going to leave. People are going to be coming in. You know, like, it. this is... Just get ready, prepare yourself. But I think yeah. a lot of us had some maybe names in mind, and maybe some of the other ones were ones that you thought about. But Jeffrey Imba was one that I think a lot of people, outside of those that are quote unquote in the know, um, were surprised by. And I understand that because he was a guy that seemed like he was up and coming, probably the gem, one of the gems of the Harson era, one of the few things that people will probably acknowledge that was a good thing or good gets. And so it hurts to see that go. So we'll sit here and wait see what happens with the rest of this transfer portal cycle. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about it here on this podcast or anything else we do with E2C network. Um, but I did want to also mention other aspects of the transfer portal, other sports, some good and bad. Um, right now, Auburn basketball is in the middle of a, <laughs> it's a nice way of putting it in AJ change over of the guard is probably and that's a pun on play on words <laughs> i just thought about it with the loss of several names yoan treor um mm. you know wendell green there was speculation if alan flanagan was going to leave and then then he was on the roster again I, I don't still don't understand what really is going on with that situation and there's more to come good thing denver jones has transferred in uh, by all accounts, speculation-wise. Looks to be what we need to fill some areas that we didn't do as well this year. That's a good thing. Uh, it's not really transfer portal, but kind of mixed within this. Peyton Marshall, the 2024 center, decommitted at that time. And then you've got a bunch of other names that are apparently close to making decisions that we maybe by the time you're watching or listening to this have already happened. Um, so I want to open it up to you, AJ thoughts on maybe basketball stuff. If you have any, and, and one in particular too. the discussion and rumor of Devin Cambridge returning to the <laughs> Auburn Tigers. I still just, for my own safety of, uh, not getting my hopes up about that type of feel good story and not putting bank on that. And I'm probably going to be wrong and people can show this to me and say, wow, you were wrong on that one. But thoughts on basketball situation right now with the transfer portal and maybe even a little bit of Devin Cambridge. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously affected basketball. I think you see it quote unquote less in basketball. Yeah. Uh, just because there's less people on the roster. You see it a lot in football. It feels like during the transfer portal for football, it feels like every day or every other day, somebody's leaving and it's just kind of the reality of it. Basketball, much less. Your rosters are much less. Um, and it is tough. You know, you have guys that you like Peyton uh, Marshall, a four star, seven foot tall guy. And, and you have high hopes of him because, you know, you know, you have to have somebody like that. Um, I, I come back to your, your kind of your final thought about, you know, Ke Cambridge. I would love to see Cambridge potentially come back. It's a feel good story, right? It would be so good. Because it wasn't Cambridge and one of uh, which team did he transfer to? He went to Arizona State to play with his brother for a year. Yeah. And I saw people like downplaying this and like, guys, just don't get so excited about it. Don't I like that's the coolest story. I mean, it is a cool story. It if, if that's what happens. You transferred. People gave you crap for leaving. You went to play with your brother and then you came back. I mean, I don't know that that's necessarily what he planned to do, but if it works out the way, it's just a cool story. And he came back to us, come back home into the family. Into that was the so home. cool. And, and you could tell while he was at Auburn, it, it's just like a lot of these players, they really enjoyed their time. They enjoyed the teammates. If he comes back, there will st still be a good number of teammates that he's played alongside. And uh, I don't know. It, he was a fun one. I mean, he, he had just uh, – He's got bounce for days, man. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Yes. I'd love to see that happening again. So listen, I'm going to be all over that. If it happens, I just, I can't bring myself to believe <laughs> it's going to happen just for my own protection, for my little Auburn heart to be burst. Yeah. Uh, and what better selling point for Auburn 
we, we're so good. People that leave come back <laughs> like players in the transfer portal. That's how good, like think about that from a marketing standpoint. Yeah. All over that. You're welcome, Auburn Athletics. I've just done your job for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just reminds me when I was in college a little bit, you know, I, I went to college with Cam Newton. Um, I'll just throw it out there. Just name year. drop. Okay. Why don't you? You know, well, and then, then my senior year, uh, 2015, uh, Cam Newton went to college, graduated. It just kind of reminds me. It's the feel good story, but it's also a good story of, you know, players that, you know, Top caliber talent, obviously Heisman Trophy winner Cam Newton comes back to Auburn and decides to finish his degree, yep. which most athletes, when they're that big, don't even care. They're they're not even going to do that. And I think that's a little piece of Auburn that just you know it keeps keeps you pulling back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, even like we've seen some uh, you know Suni Lee at A Day, like who would have thought Suni Lee would have gone to an A Day game? That was just gross. And but, she did, but she doesn't care about Auburn. She's just here just to give her something to do. Right. That's what right. everybody else was saying. Just to it, pass the time between Olympics. Apparently. Yeah, right. Right. You know, Tim Hudson came back and did the same thing and stayed around to be an assist non-paid coach. He doesn't need to get paid. We all know that we acknowledge all these things, but it's still the, the story remains the same here is that Auburn is something special and different. And when professional athletes who don't need the money, don't need to have their degree, don't need to come back. And those that aren't professional yet, like in Devin, they, they at least can entertain the idea that tells you there's something special and something different. And that's what we talk about here.